sounds kind of popped. Megan, what are we doing today? Today we're making agnolotti. The hell is that? And pasta from the French Laundry cookbook. And where is it? Which one? I marked it here. We're making the sweet potato agnolotti minus the sage cream, minus the brown butter and all that kind of stuff, and minus the sweet potato and we're using butternut squash. So what are we doing? Okay, so we have about a one and a half pounds of butternut squash here. Um, and we're gonna roast them now. It's peeled uh, with four ounces of butter. Um, because in the recipe, it's calling for sweet potatoes and we're roasting them in the peel. Um, I think we probably don't want to get like a crust or anything from roasting the oven, so we're actually going to put the butter on here and then cover with aluminum foil uh, while it cooks. So a lot of butter. So it's been like a little over an hour and we're just going to check and see how they're doing. It smells really good. Like butter? Like butter. Mm -hmm. So I really like this up. Watch the steam. It looks good. And so we're just going to give it a poke and see how easily the knife boils in. And I think these are good. It's very soft. You need to be really soft because we're gonna basically turn them into mush after. Right? And like a little piece like that and push it, pass it through. Sure. Okay, we'll try. Okay. So um, these are a little big to fit in the rice here. Maybe the potatoes would have been smaller, but we're just gonna cut them in more manageable pieces and try passing it through the ricer. Ricer, once again, coming in handy. Okay, so now our squash is all roasted and we cut it into uh, slightly smaller pieces so it can fit in the ricer. And we're just going to pass it through directly into our saucepan over here, um, which we're going to use to cook it. So, pieces. Now the point of no return where we've realized that we probably would have been better off using a blender or a thermal mix for squash as because we're not doing potatoes but um, we're not can't go back now. The squash the squash itself has more fibers if you imagine than a potato so instead of passing through really smoothly um, it's sort of having some resistance and then the liquid and the butter sort of shooting up. But I mean the other thing too is that I think the reason we use a ricer for potatoes is because we don't want to blend them otherwise it can potentially get really gummy. Um, whereas we don't have that problem with squash so we could have just ooh, put it into a blender. You ready? So now that we have our squash processed we're going to take our bacon and um, well, sort of bacon. So it, the recipe calls for two slices of bacon. Uh, we don't have regular bacon, so we're gonna use some of this nice uh, hot pot pork, um, which is basically the same, same thing, same. sliced pork belly. Um, and bonus is it's already frozen. So the recipe calls for it to be frozen, and then you're gonna cut it into a quarter inch dice. Um, so we're just gonna take these slices, and then we're gonna fry them. Um, in a pan. So. so. Okay. Okay, so we cooked our pork 
and um, we've also been kind of gently cooking our squash a little bit as well um, since the squash has a little bit more moisture in it than the potato does when you cook out some of that extra water um, and now that that's done we're going to season with salt and pepper uh, season to taste salt pepper and uh, actually what do you think we're just going to tell me what he thinks that's good okay um then a little bit of salt and um then in this case it's either uh, some kind of spice blend or all spice and not make a pinch so we'll just add a little bit of that and see where we're at and we want to season this before we add in the pork Okay, so we just tasted it and then added a little more salt and pepper. Um, and now that we're happy with how that tastes, we can add in the bacon that's cooked for the pork. Um, and at this point, we would also add in the rest of the butter, just like four more tablespoons. Um, except that what I realized is that I put all the butter in with the squash when we were first cooking it. So this is not super happy with me right now, but. Um, the, the good news is that we put it all in here anyway, so I figure it's going to be okay. <laughs> so mix this all up. Uh, it's been seasoned and it just has to chill uh, before we can use it for our pasta filling, which is fine because it gives us time to make our pasta. Action. Okay, now uh, we have our filling cooling down and we're going to make the pasta dough for our agnolotti. So we have all our ingredients scaled out here and we have four ounces of all-purpose flour we have three egg yolks half of an egg roughly 27 grams um, of yolk and white and then we have one tablespoon of milk and one and a half teaspoons of olive oil so we're going to start um, the basic approach just make a well Once you get all the flour in there, just keep working that together. Um, then you're going to knead the dough by pressing it bit by bit in a forward motion with the heels of your hand, rather than for folding over it itself as you would with bread dough. So you're making a ball and you're going to kind of press it forward, press it forward, and um, then gather it back up again, I guess and just continue doing that so it's not a regular bread dough type of kneading so that's okay yeah so that's good it's not sticky it's moist just leave it off to the side for a minute and you can clean off the work surface okay so it's been a few minutes our work surface is clear we're gonna lightly flour our work surface and knead the dough by pushing against it in a forward motion with the heel of your hands Form the dough into a ball again and knead it again. And we're gonna keep doing this and because it becomes silky smooth. Um, approximately 10 to 15 minutes. And um, the test to see when it's done is to um, pull your finger through it and it should want to snap back in place. I'm not sure. Okay, so Royce. Oh, there we go. Okay, Google. Stop. Okay, so Royce has been kneading this now for just about 15 minutes. I just heard the timer actually. Um, and is it silky smooth, Royce? Mm hmm. Yeah, and um, he's stretched it, and it seems like the gluten is pretty well developed. Um, so at this point, once uh, you've kneaded it enough, um, you're going to let the dough sit in the fridge uh, it says rest at least 30 minutes and up to an hour before we put it through the pasta machine um, and in the book it also says that you should be wrapping it twice with plastic wrap we just want to really make really 
You really want to be sure that the dough doesn't dry out basically. Um, so you could also rest it for longer in the fridge. Uh, you just have to let it come back to room temperature before you start rolling it out. Do we dust this at all or no? Oh, I think so. Why? It's so fast, Does it look like you need it or no? No, it seems alright. Five inches or at least five inches wide. Um, and they also say it should be translucent, a little bit translucent. You should be able to see your fingers through it. Line on my fingers. I think that's what the. So this was set in like seven on our machine, and so I don't know if you can see on the video, but you can kind of see the outline of my fingers here, um, and that was the idea. But it's not translucent, so you don't want to be too too thin. Okay, so we're gonna pipe along this bottom edge here, and we're gonna try and leave a third of an inch border along the bottom. So, what does that look like? Maybe like this. Half egg that we used before. So I think just like this. That makes sense. Yeah. Right? I'm pinching. This is my understanding of how this works. Something like that, and then what is it supposed to be? You're pinching, uh, so we're pinching. What are we doing today? Well, you already asked me that. We're making half to peel our fake sweet potato, our butternut squash. Half be peel our already. Filling. Yeah, I, we, we kind of got it. I got ahead of us here today and I also kind of cut it in the wrong spot. So rice is all of the potatoes, not just ours. 